Hello everyone, welcome to BI Consulting Pro. This is episode 4 of our series Power Query Tutorial. So in today's video, we are going to discuss about SharePoint and OneDrive for business files import, lack of support for Microsoft Graph in Power Query, and lastly we are going to discuss about connectivity without an existing connector. So let's get started. If you are over here for the very first time, please consider to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest updates and videos. Right now I am on my Power BI desktop and in my browser I have opened two different tabs. One is my SharePoint site which is Power BI demo you can see over here and another uh, files which are on my OneDrive. So whenever you need to connect with either of your SharePoint or OneDrive, then how should you connect? How Power Query is going to help you? That's what we are going to learn in today's video. So let's start with the SharePoint. So first of all, you have to navigate to your site, SharePoint site, where you have located your files. Files can be any text, CSV, Excel or even a folder. So you need to copy the address from here. Now you need to navigate to your Power BI desktop application and click on get data. Once you will click on get data, you will find a lot of data sources are mentioned over here and these are trust me more than 150. So Power Query offers a series of ways to gain access to the files that are hosted on either SharePoint or OneDrive for business. And in this part, we are going to have a look how to get the access of those files or how to get the data from those files which are sitting on your SharePoint site. So click on more. Once you will click on more, it would take a couple of seconds, depends on your system configuration, how fast it can process. And there you will find online services. Either you can click over here or just directly type SharePoint. Once you will type SharePoint, you will find three options. One is SharePoint folder, another is SharePoint online list, and third is SharePoint list. So SharePoint has two versions. One is on-premise, another is SharePoint online. And right now we need data from the SharePoint folder, which is on our SharePoint site. So let's click on this SharePoint folder, click connect. Now you can paste your site URL over here. So you will see as soon as I pasted this complete URL, it's showing me this warning sign. That means this is not the correct one. So what you have to do, you have to actually just paste the URL till your site name only. And as I showed you earlier, my site name is Power BI Demo. So once I'll go back over there, I'll see Power BI Demo is over here. So I have to remove the part of the URL which is falling behind SharePoint site. Once you will remove this, you will see that warning sign has been gone. Just click OK. It would ask you your authentication if you haven't signed in earlier, but I have already signed in. So that's why it's not asking me for the authentication. But generally it would ask the same authentication process that we have discussed in our previous video where we discussed authentication with the data source, what are the different authentication types. So you have to sign in with that and once you will do, you will come into this page. Now you have option, either you can combine all those files over here, combine and load or combine and transform the data. Otherwise you can separately click on transform the data. However, you should note that the file extension should be same if you want to combine the files and secondly, the file schema should be same. Otherwise, you would get a lot of problem and your data is not going to come out correctly. Then let's click on this transform data tab over here so that we can filter it out or we can apply any power query steps that we would like to do over here. Now, if I click on this extension button, there are two different extensions over here. First is .csv, another is .xlx. So I just want the CSV one, so I can click on this. And now, even I want to filter it out my file name, I can do it over here. But if I don't want, I can just directly load all the files. 
However, if you just want to load one file, that also you can do. You can just click on this. Once you will click, it's going to change and it's going to open the file for you. Now you can see on your right hand side pane where the different applied steps are over here and you can check your data whether it's correct or not and you can load your data. There is one another way which I have already explained to you in my previous videos. We can also load the files from SharePoint like a table we load from the database. So last point over here under the SharePoint connectivity is the SharePoint.contents function. This is very important because many times whenever you would like to connect with this one, you would face certain kinds of situations when you need to use this function. So let's go first in the advanced query editor and see how it's going to connect with it. As you can see over here, in the SharePoint, once it's going to try to connect with your SharePoint folder, it's going to get the source equals to SharePoint.files. And from the files, you can see there's an API version. Right now it's taking API version 15. Now we are going to see how to use SharePoint.contents function and how you can customize this API version as well. So for that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just create a blank query over here. I'll say blank query. Over here, I'm going to mention my function name that is SharePoint.contents and you can see over here, this is the function. Now, once you have this function, you can start writing your own URL and you can see over here it's saying that URL is text. So first you have to mention your URL over here. That is your URL that you want to connect your site address. And in our case, let's connect with this. So this is going to be our URL over here. And now after this URL, you can mention your API version too. So I want this to automatically do its work. So once you are done with this, click on this and it would take some time. And now you can see it has loaded your all the data. So this is another way if you want to do some advanced functioning, you want to control your version rather than auto, you can also mention over here, in Power Query 1, we just saw that here in the advanced version, it's using 15. But rather than 15, what if I want to use the version 14? That is my API control version. So either you can add it over here or you can just go in your first step and there it's mentioned. So let's say now you can see that here also you are loading the same data. Now let me try 15 as well. See the difference between 14 and 15. In 14, once we did, we were not getting this date modified or date created. However, in 15, we are getting this. So each API version has its own functionality. If you would like to more, please check the Microsoft documentation where you can see how these API versions are going to work. So now we are trying to connect with the OneDrive and over here OneDrive you can just come on to your browser where your files are located and you can copy this URL from the browser. Click Ctrl C and once you will copy this URL you have to come over here and here let's use the SharePoint again. And we are going to say yes we need files from the folder. and we don't need the whole url again it's showing me the warning sign that it's not the correct one it's the there's some error so remove this click ok once you will click it's going to ask you how you would like to sign again this is the authentication process so i'll say using my microsoft account and you can sign in over here Once you will sign in, just click connect. And now you can see that you have your all the files like the same way you did for SharePoint. So basically functionality underneath this OneDrive and SharePoint are the same and you can connect both in the same way. Now it's up to you. You want to combine all these files, you want to load, you want to transfer, you can do. So now let's talk about the lack of support for Microsoft Graph in Power Query. 
You should remember that connecting to Microsoft Graph REST APIs from the Power Query isn't recommended or supported. Instead, Microsoft recommends users explore alternative solutions for retrieving analytics data based on Graph, such as Microsoft Graph Data Connect. And what is Microsoft Graph Data Connect? I'll provide you a link in the description section. Please go and check that out. Now let's move forward. And here we are going to discuss about the connectivity without an existing connector. So there are alternatives to out of the box connectivity in Power BI Desktop. What does that mean? While Power BI Desktop offers out of the box connectivity to over 150 data sources, there may be the case when a user want to connect to a data source for which no out of the box connector is available. Although Microsoft is releasing a lot of new connectors in recent Power BI updates and if you would like to know more please check the Microsoft Power BI updates where you will see in every month's update they are coming with some new connectors. Connectivity through generic interface. It may be possible to connect to certain data sources without a built-in out-of-the-box connector by using generic interface connector. For example, the ODBC connector can connect to the services ODBC interfaces and the web connector can connect to the service with REST API interfaces. So using available Power BI out of the box generic interface connector to connect through interfaces that the end data source ports allows users to connect to many more data sources on the internet than there are specific out of the box connectors. So if you would like to learn more, I'll provide you a link in the description section and you can go and check that. There is also another point that is connectivity through a custom connector. The Power BI Query SDK, that is Software Development Kit, allows users to create custom connectors to unlock connectivity scenarios to Power BI Desktop. Users can create and distribute custom connectors to end services and data services they can authenticate to. So this is another way to connect with that one. Now, lastly, we are also going to discuss two more points, that is request to data source owner to build and certify a connector. Well, as only the data source owner or an approved third party can build and certify a custom connector for any service, generally we don't do, but in case we do, end users are encouraged to share the demand for a connector directly with the data source owner to encourage investment into creating and certifying one. Otherwise, you don't need to do that. Lastly, request in Power BI Ideas form. So if you really want a new custom connector and you really think that it's very important and other people around the world can also use it, then you can directly go to the Microsoft Idea Forum. Then you have to create your idea over there and other users around the world can go over there and they can also vote. And once that idea has been approved and also there is a certain awards are on that particular idea, then Microsoft would work on that and soon it would be available in preview or for general availability for all the users. That's all guys for today's video. If you have any question or concern, please connect with us. And also don't forget to subscribe our channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest videos.